many of you who have been trying to learn something consistently, and many of you have been trying to master something, understand that mastering anything takes time. And I myself know a lot of people who understand that they need to invest a lot of time, but they can't find this driving force that will motivate them to keep going. They tell themselves they're going to go to a language school or take courses or start taking private classes someday, yet they never find the motivation to begin, or if they begin, they never find the motivation to continue. And many people explain this to themselves as, um, I'm just not a very organized person. I can't organize myself. And this is what I invited Linda to talk about today. Uh, I've known Linda for almost four years. I'm very, very happy to have her as a student. We have been working on our communication skills in English together. And she always kept telling me that she's a very disorganized person, just completely not organized. However, she's been very consistent. I'm inviting you to join this conversation, watch this interview, and if you can recognize your own patterns, I want to do it, but I'd rather not because I'm not very organized, or I really want to see this through, but I'm not sure how I'm going to stay committed and dedicated because I just don't have enough organizing skills. Watch this interview. I think you will learn a lot, <laughs> especially if you're an advanced learner who wants to continue advancing their skills. Let me ask Linda to introduce herself. Can you please say a few words about you? Hi, everyone. My name is Linda and I live in Moscow. I work in real estate and for the last 20 years, I have been estimating market value for different types of commercial properties. My job is to tell my clients uh, what, how much their properties worth on the market now. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy to have you here. I think your job title says you're a property valuer, right? Yes. And, true. and that means, and you work for an international company. So that yes, means. Yes, I work for an international company and I use English almost every day mm -hmm. to communicate with my clients. We write reports in English. Mm -hmm. So. So uh, you have to communicate them. I have to communicate. Yes, I have to. How much the property is worth to those How people? How much the property it. and explain it, why? Um, oh, you have to explain it. Well. Yes, sometimes. In English, right? In English, yes. How did it all start? Have you always worked in an international company? You said you have 20 years experience. I joined my first international company in 2006. All right. And back then, uh, my English skills were uh, very poor. <laughs> <laughs> when you say very poor, what do you mean you were a beginner? I just can only introduce myself like I'm Linda and probably that was all that I can say. In okay. And I took um, a three month course for the beginners. It was... Um, Why did you take this course? Like, like, okay, you joined an international company. So what? Was there a pressing need to speak English? Yes, because every meeting... Uh -huh. uh, was in English. Everything was in English. Reports were in English. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the colleagues were actually native speakers. So okay, and that was in Moscow, right? Yes, it was in Moscow. Mm -hmm. And when you said that you joined this three month, a uh, three month yes, course, yes, uh, I joined this three months course. It was offered by the company, right? Yes, it mm -hmm. was a corporate course. So how did it go for you? Um, actually, I liked it, and but then uh, I practiced on my own for mm. several years. I did a lot of grammar books, mm -hmm. um, all the stuff that everyone does, I believe. Everyone, everyone does different uh, kinds, yes, but different I, kinds uh, of stuff. Yes, I did it on my own. And then after five years, I went to a language school mm -hmm. and, uh, we, uh, and joined the course that uh, was preparing us for C1 certification. Well, hold on a second. So you took a, a three-month course for absolute beginners. Yes. It was a three-month course. Yes. And then you started practicing on your own. Yes. For five years. Yes, almost like that. Uh, at first, uh, there were grammar books. Then I started reading in English. Yeah, my point is that so you had been practicing on your own for five years until you went to a language school and they said your language... Yes, they tested me. Uh-huh. And they said, because uh, initially I was going to join another course, which is uh, was level 
one level uh, lower. lower than that course that mm -hmm. eventually I took. But basically you managed to go from a beginner to B2 pretty much at home on your own. Yes. Wow. Yes. And, and how long was that C1 course? Uh, it was, um, it lasted five months mm -hmm. and then uh, we took this uh, exam. Exam, yes. Did you pass? Yes, I passed. I got... With the best results, right? Yes, 74% as far as I remember. Was it the best result in the group? It was the best result in the group. Were yeah. you happy? Were you proud of yourself? No, not at no? all. No? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because although I have this certificate, mm -hmm. I still struggle a lot with writing emails. Mm -hmm. uh, every time it was like, I don't know, a, um, hard work. What is difficult for you about writing emails in English? Or what was difficult if it's, if it's gotten better? <sighs> to explain uh, what I have on my mind, to explain things, to... Uh, I have problem with speaking also. I had... Mm. Like it, it was worse, right, than just now? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you say it was difficult to explain, was it difficult like to find the words or... Yes, uh, just it, to put it your seems that I still don't have enough words, mm -hmm. as people think always. Mm -hmm. I uh, still don't have enough words to explain myself, mm -hmm. um, so I still have to learn something. And at that moment, when we met five mm -hmm. years ago, uh, I was kind of stuck. I didn't know what I should do, what else I should do. After the certification, right? Yes, yes. What you were working for a different company then? Yes, I was working uh, for the different companies. This is when we met, this is yes. where we met in your yes. office. I remember it was um, a corporate communication course. Yeah, I did. And a there were a lot of uh, people, like 20 or 30 probably. And uh, it was intense. <laughs> <laughs> it was intense for you. It was intense, but it was like, wow, that's what I, what I need. Uh, I, I I was very surprised. What do you mean by surprise? What surprised you exactly? I, that was something really different from what I did before. Oh, so the whole approach was different. The whole approach was different from what you expect. Actually, I can like thinking about your C1 certificate, I can relate because you did a five month course that promised a C1 level, yeah. and you got it right. Yes. You had your result, seventy four percent, the best in the group. You must have been very proud of yourself. I remember myself. <laughs> Five years at the university. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a qualified English teacher. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be very, very fluent. We're not even talking C1. We're talking, well, actually, I think we're talking C1 or C2, in the best C2. case scenario, mm -hmm. C2. I graduated with, a, like, you know, with honors. Mm -hmm. And yet I felt the same limitations. On paper, I was excellent. But in reality, I understood that Everything that I know is so not enough. Yeah. It's so not enough. Um, again, writing was probably the hardest struggle for me. Yes, uh, writing was always I mean, I could translate the things, part. I could read, I could s speak. Mm -hmm. But not the way I can speak today. Writing was the hardest part, honestly. I couldn't explain myself in writing as you're saying yes i can i relate. could say what i needed in mm -hmm. writing but i couldn't really explain why i needed and why people were supposed to listen to me and that was that was really difficult so i can absolutely relate and when i came to uh give a corporate workshop well actually i did quite a few with your mm -hmm. team i didn't come to teach you english none of you it was Something really? absolutely different. Well, <laughs> we, well, remember what we did. We didn't learn English. We learned how to give feedback. It was a communication course. It was yeah. a course on communication, mm -hmm. storytelling, presentation skills, communication, feedback. But it wasn't really, we didn't really learn any grammar. We didn't really learn English. And you were saying that what surprised you was the approach. What did you experience before? Like, how was it different to what you did before? Can you? Elaborate on what you used to do and what you expected from another uh, from another course. Well, what, what, let's make it even more simple. What didn't work? Because obviously, if you had the certificate and you still couldn't speak, obviously something didn't really work. 
So what didn't work for you? What we did, we just did some, you know, random exercises, as I see it now. Uh, where? In language school or what I did uh, on my own. I... Well, they worked in a way, they, they got you ready for an exam. Yes, yes. But they haven't prepared me for real life situations. Uh, mm. They do not, uh, they didn't teach me how to actually communicate with people on another language, on English. Mm -hmm. So, although I learned a lot of vocabulary, mm -hmm. uh, I knew grammar, uh, I learned grammar, there was still something missing that, I don't know, at that moment, I didn't know what. Did you see that, that you can potentially learn to communicate in another language when we started working with your team? Yes, yes. You changed my mindset. I did. <laughs> completely. <laughs> what was the biggest takeaway for you? Practice. It's not um, doing some exercises, learning vocabulary. It's something you do deliberately. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's not following instructions. Yes, and uh, the other important thing is to be focus so to, uh, to know what are you doing and oh, why big. you do that's big doing. focus yes focus. why you do this you have been pretty focused and consistent because then you i think you did the writing course with me i did listening course no you did the listening course yes then you did the public speaking course no the first was uh the public speaking course okay. and yes the and course. then listening course and then we've been working consistently for the yes last... and then the pandemic when the pandemic started yes uh, we have we started, we working, started online, working online and you have been consistently coming to classes twice a week for the last almost two years yes <laughs> you have been very very consistent uh with your practice routine and with your learning journey what motivates you to keep to to continue because if if i analyze your journey right now three months and then a few years of a break five months and then a couple years of a break mm -hmm. and now you've you've been very consistent like why what changed here and what keeps you going what keeps me going that i see progress first of all and why mm, i take your online course because i realized that i need feedback Mm. that there was not enough feedback before okay. yes there was not enough feedback because uh, getting 74 percent is not a, it's not a feedback i didn't know what else i should do what i did uh, what i do wrong what it's, you see uh, yeah i think what you're trying to say is that when we take a class when we take a course or when we take a class we are expected to learn in class we're expected to learn as much as we can during a yes. course. But then very rarely you will find a course that teaches you what you can do with all this information after the course is over. Yes, and at that moment when we met, mm -hmm. I was on the lookout mm -hmm. for a sustainable um, approach to oh. how to practice English, actually. I preach this approach that there is always a lot that you can do yourself. Mm -hmm. Can you can you see that now you can organize your practice routine yourself? Let's say we don't have a class. I don't know. Any more classes this year? Will you still find a way to organize your practice routine? Do you, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. But do you know how to do that? Uh, yes, I hope. I know. I know how to do it. And you've been I, actually doing this. For the yes, last I've year. been doing this. And, but uh, there are things that I still want to improve. Like what? Mm, like uh, now my focus is to be more creative with mm -hmm. my practice. And that's what I'm trying to improve. That's kind of the last uh, step of the program that we're doing really? with you right now. <laughs> yes. So you're not... Uh, we have we started working on it maybe two months ago. How to create your own exercises and how to create your own routine. And when you say I still have to learn that, obviously you still need to learn this because you only started a few months a couple months ago yes but 
how do you understand this for yourself? Because I think it's also interesting for many other people who are looking for independent strategies to improve and continuously hone their language skills. How do you understand the process of creation? And what, what exactly do you need to learn to do better? Uh, before, I thought that being creative uh, means doing uh, whatever you like. For example, I just watch... Uh, a podcast and I learn, for example, I learn new words and that counts as practice and it counts as mm, some creative exercise. So doing random stuff. Yeah, doing random stuff. But now I realized that actually there are steps you have to take before you create something. Yes. And actually, it's a, it's a quite um, structured. Mm -hmm process uh, so uh, apart from choosing content mm -hmm. that you like mm -hmm. and that's the important thing mm -hmm. to choose only what you really what really inspires you mm, you have then you have to analyze opportunities for uh, different kind of exercises what you can do mm -hmm. with this content and um, only then you choose your focus and um, metrics of completion. Yeah, like, that's very important. You, you 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 know how to measure your own results. What yes. are your own metrics? So although it's uh, it's it's a creative ex it's uh, it's a creative exercise. It takes a lot of uh, you know steps that you have to take. And um, doesn't that scare certain... you? Or you like the fact that it has structure? <laughs> There is always this temptation to skip all this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people want to do. They yes. take step one, ah, maybe I can skip all the steps in between yes. and I can jump to step two. Ten. But the hardest part for me is uh, the takeaway. Uh, like, uh, give myself feedback, analyze um, what, uh, what were my achievements, what, uh, analyze notice my mistakes and decide what I should do next. Like, what, what did I yes. actually create? Yes, right? what did I create? Was and what do I do with this next? And is it completed or not? Yes, that's also a big point. Did I complete an exercise? Yes. There's always this feeling that I should do something else. I should do uh, more. Are you saying that you're learning the structured approach to creating your mm -hmm. own routine? Yes. But, but this is so true, what you're saying is that many people think this process, when, when they hear the word creative, just like when they hear the word disorganized, yes. but creative, many people think it's just, you, you know, you just wake up and you do whatever, and it's just random, it's messy, and it has no structure. Yes, yes. But in fact... Well, I agree with the in fact, fact it's a uh, hard work actually to work. be creative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no? well, it probably is. It sounds like or feels like hard work when you're learning to yes, understand the learn. structure. Mm -hmm. For me now, it takes a split second. Right yes, now. but what I'm the point I'm trying to drive home is that many people think that uh, being creative is just, as you said, doing whatever. Yes, and and doing whatever when you feel like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in fact, it means learning about learning a lot about yourself, learning when you're most productive, when you're most creative, what inspires you, what you potentially can create and what you actually can create. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you try to create something that you're simply unable to create, you will always fail. Yes, true. Learning how much time you actually have to create, how much time, how much pa patience you have <laughs> to <laughs> and create. brain power. <laughs> Yes. Do you really want to create or do you want to copy someone else's creation? Yes. So there's a big questions because creating in, in the system that I teach in the system of exercises to create your practice routine is organizing your practice routine. It means creating the environment and the right conditions for yourself in your own life mm -hmm. for continuous improvement so that there is room in your day for this deliberate, well-structured, sustainable, creative practice routine yes. that you yeah. choose this is creation and of course it, it needs to be structured because the more structure there is the easier the easier it is yeah. and when we yes. say that it's structured it doesn't mean that it's stiff and immobile 
because this is, as you said, I, as you told me yesterday, actually, it was funny that you, you used to think that organized people are people who are absolutely not flexible. Yes, uh, I, I thought that people who are, who were organized, uh, they plan everything. 20 years in They advance. follow their plan. They're very productive. Uh, but now I see it, you know, what's, uh, what does, uh, what productive, being productive uh, means. What does it mean for you now? Yeah. Now I realize that being productive, it, it uh, means doing right things mm -hmm. uh, in the right moment. Oh, okay. That's yeah. interesting. It's not about doing more, but doing a lot? No, it's just uh, doing what matters. So, uh, how to be organized, if you ask me, mm -hmm. how to be organized. So, so just to find room in your day for the things that, that matters matter. to you. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. That's how I see it. That's how you now. see it. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, a lot of people think, just like you used to think, that being organized means ha to have your life pre-planned without yeah. any opportunity to change things. And when they hear the word structure, they also think that structure is something absolutely not flexible. You can't move things around. Mm -hmm. While in fact, the structure is the backbone of your practice routine. If you understand the structure, like what follows what and what needs to be there, you can feel it, you can fill it with all types of content. You can add whatever you want to it. Mm -hmm. So how you what what you put inside the structure is totally up to you. You can be as creative as you yeah, want. It's not that important as uh yes, having I the right used to structure. think uh like for example, I need another grammar book which is better than what I have. And unfortunately, a lot of language courses sell this idea that, oh, here is this unique book. Yes. They sell unique content. We have a unique course for advanced learners. We have a unique list of vocabulary. We have a new TED talk that you should absolutely watch if you want to be mm -hmm. successful. We have a new series, a new set of episodes. They sell content. Mm -hmm. Whereas I always say content is not important. It's more important what you do with this content. And content yes. is free. Yes. Or what you do with this content matters. True. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to what it means to be organized. Remember, we actually looked this word up. Yes, in the dictionary. In the dictionary. What did it end up meaning? Do you remember what being organized? What, what does it mean to organize? I think we checked it in the Cambridge Dictionary. Yes. I don't know. Do you remember exactly? I think, yes, I do. I think it means, well, short to memory, right? So one yes. of the skills. <laughs> I think to organize, if I remember correctly, means to make arrangements for something to happen. Yes, as I said, uh, find room oh, that's, in your that's day. Why you said that. Yes, for the things that. So it's funny, you, you interpreted it your own way, you yeah. applied it immediately to your situation. But if you think about it, it means to make arrangements for something to happen. It means you create environment and you create yeah. opportunities for something to happen. It's one of the most creative process there can be. Yes. <laughs> Organizing your day, you decide what follows what, in what order, and what exactly you do every day. It's one of the most creative processes you can think of. There's nothing stiff or stifled or uh, immobile about it. Mm -hmm. It's very creative and very flexible. Yes. Think about people who organize events. They have to put a thousand of pieces together. They have to bring all these people to the same venue. They mm -hmm. have to think of so many things and put them together. They create this event, which didn't exist before. People didn't know about it. The venue was empty. They, we had no venue. And then when this happens, they made it happen. They organized it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like it's sometimes, you know, our own definitions you know, are the major yeah, roadblocks. Yes, so we it, think uh, it's, it means one thing. Turns out it's a completely turns different out. thing. Like We assign our own definitions to things and objects and concepts because we have experience. That's what I learned uh, from you, that everything everything has to be checked. I uh, always not, remind uh, you, in yes. one source, but... At uh, least five sources. At least five At sources. least ten credible examples. Yes. You always want to check in with the source. Because for many people, their first English teacher is still the source. Yeah. I, I remember my... No, it, it, it should be correct because I remember my teacher said so. <laughs> well, maybe your teacher made a mistake. Happens to all human beings. But maybe you also remembered wrong what she said. Yes. Can happen. Misunderstand. Or maybe you misunderstood mm -hmm. what she said. 
or what he said. And, and for many people, things they hear on TV and they remember on is the source or something they read in a book but failed to apply. And they, and they say, no, I saw this. this. So check in with the source, at least five sources. Mm -hmm. Today, luckily, we have such abundance of information. You can yeah. always check yourself. And I always give, you know, the self-editing and self-correcting tools, I give them to all of my students. Yes, yes. Because native life fluency, what is it after all? Is that we actually speak the language that native speakers understand. Yes, and we have to learn from them. And we have to learn from them. So they are the source. All of these people who speak English from birth become the source, which is which means we're learning from abundance of examples, not from a limited set of examples offered in a textbook. Yes, true. And, and self-correction is really all about this checking in with the reality. How do people speak in their reality? How did your approach to learning change overall? Because it has, I, 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 as a teacher, I also see it has undergone some major shifts and some major changes. Because you're the kind of student who does their homework. And I think you told me the story about your son who sees homework as punishment. Yes. He... Uh, uh, watched some video or learned it, uh, read it somewhere that homework was initially created <laughs> for children that uh, were behaving badly or something like oh. that. It was like a punishment. <laughs> and, and this idea stuck with him? Yes, it stuck with him. He sees it, uh, he sees homework as punishment. Did you, did you used to see homework the same way in school? Probably everyone, mm -hmm. everyone did that. But when did your approach to homework start changing? Because it has changed. It, it it has changed, and now I see homework as my choice. And can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because you also said when you did that C one course, you, yeah. you told me you were the only one. Yes, I who did their homework. <laughs> yes, because I wanted to succeed. Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it was a choice too. It was my choice. When I have this goal, mm -hmm. like an exam, I will practice, I will be consistent. Oh, yeah. you created this practice for yourself. Like I have a goal. Yes. So I have it's to. It's not that I uh, need this certificate for anything. Mm. So you just decided yeah. to organize. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're learning <routine laughs> in such a way so that you have to show up in class. Yes, yes. Although uh, I'm very disciplined, it's my. It's in my nature. It's, it's funny that you say I'm disciplined, but I'm but, very disorganized. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> because many people think discipline and being disciplined and being organized. No, for me, discipline is uh, when someone told you, uh, tells you to be, um, for example, tomorrow somewhere mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock and I will be there. <laughs> so if you promise something, you keep your word. Yes, yes. And wow. Why do you say you're a disorganized person? You're disciplined, but why disorganized? It's hard for me to be productive, to follow some plan, all kind of routine. Actually, it, it's hard for me. It's hard for me. It's to, hard for you to stick to a certain yes, plan. Yes, to stick for a long time. For but, a long time. Mm -hmm. Like what? With work or with anything? For example, let's let's just take an, an imaginary situation. Somebody writes a nutrition plan for you for 30 days and tells you 7 o'clock you need to eat this, 9 o'clock you need to drink this, lunch you need to do that. So many people pay for that because they want somebody to decide for them what they need to eat for the next 30 days to lose weight, let's say. That's yeah. the motivation. Would you do that? No. I wouldn't even I don't think uh, of such a, you know, that someone tells me what to do uh, i mean in terms of health and mm -hmm. my food no how about work if somebody told you what to do every day to become a better professional would you follow that plan i'm not sure i will be able no <laughs> So when you say, I can't stick to certain routines, well, obviously you mean routines that repeat. Yes. Do you mean somebody else's instruction? Yes, yes. Is that what you mean? Yes, probably that's what I mean, yeah. 
when you make plans yourself, when you put things in your calendar, do it's you... different. Oh, do you stick to those plans? Mm, I try to be flexible, but yes, it's... If I'm not, you know, sometimes uh, I tend to be... Um, I tend to overcommit. Mm -hmm. That happens but then, but I try not to. Mm, because you're disciplined, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you try to follow your own plan. Can we? Can I just try to draw a line at least and tell yes. me if I understand you correctly? So you were saying that you were telling me a lot. I have heard it so many times that you. You don't consider yourself a very organized person, but turns out that you don't because it's hard for you to follow somebody else's plan to the letter. Yes, maybe that is why I was practicing on my own because mm -hmm. because you could decide what you can do. I can decide. I can be flexible, and that's actually the best approach for me as well. So I, <laughs> I like to decide what I want to do with my time. Mm -hmm. Please show me the exercise I want to learn. I will. I will. I will. I will, I will be very disciplined. I will be there. I will pay attention because I want to learn, but <laughs> then I need time to be on my own and play with this and see how, how it works in my life. Can I actually use it on my own? And if I struggle, I'll go back to the coach. Oh, I tried, I failed, teach me more. <laughs> yes. you know, that's, that's how it works with me, but mm -hmm. I absolutely need this quiet moment where I can try and test myself. Have I really learned it? Meaning, can I use it now? Mm -hmm. and, and so I absolutely need those moments not moments but sometimes days and months where i put things that i think i know now into practice and i give myself feedback have i really learned that mm -hmm. can i use it that's my criterion yes so if that's the case then probably so many other people can relate because when you go to a language school what are you supposed to do you're supposed to do homework that somebody assigns to you it's not yeah. your choice yes and sometimes it's it can be really boring. <laughs> <laughs> and now, when we're doing, you're doing this program, you're actually creating your own. Is that what you enjoy? I, I want to learn uh, how to be creative because, yeah, I see it as a way forward. But then you can you can really do what you plan to do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. And um, do you think you can? I mean, I mean, can you teach this to your son? What do you think? Is it, is it hard to teach children to see homework as choice? I want those to learn it myself. <laughs> but you, you mean that you already kind of um, see homework differently? Yes. Or you still see it as punishment sometimes? What do you mean? No, no, no. I do not see it as punishment anymore. But what do you mean? What do you want to learn yourself? And how to be creative so uh how to mm, how to practice on my own how to decide what what's important for me what i should do how long it should take mm -hmm. how much time i need probably that's that's the most important thing and have you ever, ever had this practical goal like, I need English to get a promotion. Look, oh, well, you have always worked in an international company. I need English to succeed in my career or I need English to become more professional. Was was that the driving force for you? Yes, of course. I wanted to communicate mm -hmm. and um, communicate better mm -hmm. because, you know, this thing when you're a professional, mm -hmm. you're very competent in your field, mm -hmm. but then you start, you open your mouth, you start talking and... You can't uh, explain simple things, and that's very disappointing. Is that still the motivation? Yes, yes. And can I ask you what inspires you to to do it again and again and again consistently? Is like, is this the motivation that you keep in mind? I want to communicate better at work that keeps you going, or is there something else? Yes, there is something else. Actually, I like it very much. There is so much joy mm -hmm. in the process itself. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy it, actually. What brings you the most joy? Have you, have you done this work to discover what brings you the most joy? Because everyone is different here. It's hard to explain. <laughs> well, I know. Well, well, let's be honest. You like singing, right? That, that yes, brings I you like joy. Singing. Yes, I like singing. Yes, 
I like to um, hear a song and um, realize that I understand uh, actually words. All the words. Right? <laughs> All the words. <laughs> yes, that I can sing along. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? That I can open an email and instantly uh, understand uh, what's expected from me and that I can read uh, uh, that I can read in English mm -hmm. so some small accomplishments along the way is that yes. what brings you joy? things that you that you do not notice um, that didn't happen uh, immediately that but at some points in time I just uh, notice that this com um, there is a compound effect of all the work that I did uh, before. Yeah, it, it all kind of builds up, and then yes. you feel it one day, or one day you're you happen to be in a situation where you can miraculously apply all the skills you have. But it's not a miracle; it's because you've been. But it's it's true. You don't always notice the immediate effect and the immediate result of what you're doing, but then one day it hits you that wow, you know. There is a compound effect. It exists. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it. That, that's so true. I think it applies to everything we learn. It kind of feels slow at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And it feels even slower when you're already advanced and you want to be better. It feels even slower. Yes. And there are periods of time when you, uh, I feel that nothing uh, happens. Mm -hmm. It's like I... I do something and then and there is nothing. Mm -hmm. And what what helps you like kind of break this thinking pattern or this? Cycle? It's just that I know that it just uh, I have to be persistent. That it's just uh, how to say uh, it just a period mm -hmm. that you have to that that I just have to wait because be you've patient. already been through it. Right? Yes, it yes. has already happened before. Yes, I have uh, this kind of experience. And, and it's funny, we did your progress review table so many times, right? And after every three months, we do this assessment where mm -hmm. we analyze where you are. And I do this with all the students. But every every time we do this, remember how when we did it the first time, you feel that you're stuck. You don't really see any improvement. And then when the time for the assessment comes, mm -hmm. you only start looking at your mistakes. And most people start looking at not good at this i still suck at this yeah. whereas when we want to check in with the reality we want to look at both our achievements and our failures yes yes and because look you take any person on planet earth you look only at their mistakes only at their failures and only at their negative traits mm -hmm. you're going to be looking at a total monster take any person <laughs> <laughs> If you consider only their negative traits and only their failures. So we really want to uh, look at the reality, not only uh, at one side of what we're doing. Yes, true. And, and it really needs to be taught. Like I, I see it all the time. Have you maybe experienced this as well? That it needs to be taught. We're not wired to think that way. What have I actually achieved? You know? Yes, uh, no one mm, tells us, told us. Uh, tells us uh, about this in, at school, for example, that you have to mm -hmm. also appreciate what you have already achieved. Most students look at vocabulary and grammar. Of course, if you start making those calculations, how many more words did I learn? Mm -hmm. The answer is always going to be not enough. I still know not enough because <laughs> it's impossible to learn all the words. Yes. It's impossible to learn all the grammar. But Achievements can be different. It's not only the number of words and the number of rules. Can you give a couple of examples? Because we had those progress review sessions a few mm -hmm. times with you. What have you noticed as one of the most important achievements? Maybe something around focus, because that's what you mentioned at the beginning of, the, of an interview. What has been the most important achieve, achievement for you, or maybe a few achievements? I noticed that I became more cons uh, that my writing has improved. Mm -hmm. In what way? My emails uh, became more concise. Mm. Yes, and clear. That's because uh, my thinking has changed. I, I think 
Oh, really? Can you mm-hmm. explain that a little bit? Before I thought that uh, communication is about uh, saying what you think. Mm-hmm. And now I see it, um, I realize that it's more important that other people understand you. So uh, it's my responsibility mm-hmm. to explain things uh, that way that uh, other people will understand me. Not just talk. <laughs> yes, it's not a one side road. <laughs> yeah. oh. And what do I say? Is it taking you less time now to communicate what you want to say in an email? Yes, uh, as I practice, it gets it gets easier. And that's true. The result will be concise emails when you understand what you want to say mm-hmm. and how to speak the language of your audience. The result will be always more concise emails, more concise texts. It's true. Have you noticed any other achievements? Mm. I started with emails because it was uh, th- that was important. The most me. obvious yes. thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. The most obvious uh, thing. <sighs> there are some things that are not as tangible. Mm-hmm. Like yes. what? Mm. They're hard to measure. They're hard to measure. We always have a table for and things that are hard. And how to notice. They're hard to measure, but we have to notice them. You remember when we started this interview, you mentioned focus. Yes. How did that change? As I said, I realized that uh, practice always should be deliberate. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I have to know um, what, what's my focus is currently. That's what I mean. So I do not uh, do random things. Uh, I know exactly what I need mm-hmm. right now. Can That's you, what. Can you do this in other areas of life as well? I Excuse try me. to apply it. Uh, yes. You uh, said the things that matter. Yeah. So yes. is that the same? Yes. 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 I think yes. I also mm, practice yoga uh-huh. and I uh, try to apply it there also. <laughs> I choose my focus and, for example, I need to improve something. Uh, so I practice. Uh, this thing I, I focus on something I don't know what so. are you improving right now when it comes to yoga <sighs> actually now I'm practicing not headstand but uh, when you stand on your um, on your arms for some time I thought it's impossible <laughs> <laughs> yes but once you it's enough to do it once to realize that it's possible Yes, but then... it just needs improvement. Yes, this was my my very first insight about hat stand and all those poses. I also thought that that's impossible. I need to be very flexible first. Yes, I need to have been born a ballerina <laughs> to be able to do that. But then I tried. Somebody showed me a very structured approach. How you, a very structured approach. How I'm supposed to warm up my muscles. Mm-hmm. What I need to do first. What I need to do next. And eventually, it worked. Of course, it was not perfect because Mm -hmm. I did it for the first time. But I saw that my body can actually do that. Yes. But of course, there are so many things I had to improve, but that was my motivation. It's possible. I just need to master all those steps in between, Mm -hmm. you know, and I need to, you know, learn to do all those moves uh, to be able to do this correctly and without hurting myself. Mm -hmm. But that was what inspired me too. This realization that it's actually possible. Yes. I just need to learn it. Mm-hmm. And there is a, a, a clear strategy how to learn it. You know, one of the English teachers who follows my community, and she's one of the students as well, she wrote me a feedback email where she said, I used to believe that native, like I and native like fluency are so much apart. It's impossible for me to reach native like fluency ever and then she said i looked at what you do every day mm-hmm. at all the exercise in the community because i share what i do every day mm-hmm. i don't share any anything that i don't do and she said i looked at what you do and i realized that it is very possible i just need to do it because i don't do this <laughs> i just need to yeah. do certain exercises maybe even different exercises different than i do mm-hmm. but there needs to be some routine when we improve something and i love the w- fact that you said um like it's not like you practice yoga, you you improve you, yoga, you practice yoga because it brings you joy. Yeah. But you practice something about your yoga to do yoga better. You know? Yes. It's like 
this is this is the key. So when we learn English, when we practice English, mm-hmm. it's a given. We like. It brings joy. It's good for our career. We're learning something about ourselves. We're learning communication skills, even though our communication skills are already enough. But then the focus is, what do I want to improve about my English so that it brings even more joy, mm-hmm. so that it's even more enjoyable, so that it has an even more purpose? And our focus is always something about the English, maybe vocabulary, maybe pronunciation, maybe writing, maybe emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mastering that little thing brings so much joy. Mm-hmm. Just like do the headstand. Yes, but <laughs> here comes the importance of giving yourself uh, or receiving it from someone, some, someone uh, feedback. Mm-hmm. So. Like, what is important for you to receive feedback from somebody or to learn to give feedback to yourself or both? Of course, I, my, um, my goal is to learn to give myself feedback, but it's good when you have a person, a person who mm-hmm. you trust, uh, who can give you feedback in such a form that it's clear mm-hmm. uh, and honest, and you know, it it can be it's applicable. I mean, it's something. There can be many people in your life who can do that. And actually, when you understand that just like we learn from the source, which is many people, native speakers, we can also receive feedback from a lot of people. Yeah. They probably don't realize that they give us feedback. But if you know that how to read feedback, Mm -hmm. how to understand, you can, you realize that everybody is giving you feedback at this given moment. Everybody. You just need to learn to read it. It's not always as straightforward as words Mm -hmm. that are Mm -hmm. supposed to be feedback. But it is there. And I don't think we, you really have to choose. We are social. We're a social species. We need feedback from other people. We need validation. We need approval. It's nice to have support. We mm-hmm. need all these things. We crave them. Mm-hmm. But giving feedback to self is self-reflection. Yes. It's, it's also a very, very important skill. But I wouldn't say that we need to choose. And you can have feedback from more than one person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But... As it comes from, as it comes uh, to English, Mm -hmm. I trust you completely. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. But I agree with you that feedback is important when we learn something. Mm -hmm. When I learn something, I want, and look, when I learn something, it's very straightforward. I try, I fail. I try, I fail. I try, I fail. Mm -hmm. And the first 200 times, it's really bad. And what I need from a coach because if there is an opportunity to work with a coach, I'll always go for it. What I need from the coach is to tell me what I did wrong this time mm-hmm. so that I failed. Oh, okay, I'm going to improve that. Then I failed again. What did I do wrong this time? Oh, this thing. Okay, let me work on that. And sometimes the coach will say, well, you failed because you don't have, this muscle is not developed and I need to go and work on this muscle for six months <laughs> before I can go back to that <laughs> exercise. That's what actually happened to me when I was working on my pistols, mm-hmm. my pistol squats. I realized that I lack ankle mobility. Mm-hmm. I had to work on it. And it took me eight months before I could actually go back and do a pistol squat. But I never stopped practicing. Mm-hmm. See? It was interesting for me to work on my ankle mobility because I, like, oh, then I could potentially do a very complicated and interesting move. <laughs> so it was it was interesting for me. I loved it. What is your focus right now in terms of English? Like as I said, uh to learn how to be creative with mm-hmm. my practice. So it's no vocabulary, it's no present perfect. It's mm, not, not yet, no. <laughs> not yet or not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Let's say if you forgot a grammar rule, if if you don't know what to how to ba- make your sentence correct. Does it bring you any worry these days? Or do you know what to do with this? No, it doesn't bring me any worry because I can Google it anytime. <laughs> but this is so important. Like you, you, you take ownership here. If I don't know this grammar rule, I just can go and learn it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but can you understand this language now? Because many students find it frustrating to use the target language to learn more about the target language. Let's say if you Google... Uh, if you want to remember what present perfect means and you Google it, will you understand this language that explains the present perfect? Yes, I will. Yes. Do you think you would have understood it five years ago? No. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's the major cognitive shift. Because yeah. many people, they can read in English, they cannot comprehend information in English. 
but it also takes practice of course it takes time in time and but there's nothing there's no miracle here remember the bacon party we had when i asked you guys yeah. to read the recipe and tell me what to do mm -hmm. just reading it is fine but reading and making sense of it and, and processing information and then translating it into action it was hard it was messy yes. it was fun how what exactly do we need to do first what do we need to do second how much is a third of cup of in grams <laughs> So that was it was not easy. It's not easy. Not to easy. I still cannot uh you know, there are lots of uh guided uh lessons on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh yoga lessons. Mm -hmm. I still can do it. Uh, uh in English, right? In English. Why? No. I tried mm. why? It's, it's hard to, under, uh, to do understand. something and at the same time to listen uh, and understand. So there's you you spend a lot of energy trying to figure out what they want yes. from you, right? Yes. Yeah, that that is probably also another good criterion um, when you can do the things you do every day anyway, mm -hmm. but you can do it in a different language. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I did my certification as a group fitness coach in Germany, the hardest part for me was to lead lessons in German that was my exam I could do everything like you know in terms of fitness mm -hmm. but the hardest part was to talk as I do it in another language in German yes. that required so much thinking mm -hmm. oh, that was it was probably the, the hardest part about it I don't know how I passed that exam <laughs> <laughs> but I can understand you so but I decided I should include it uh, it into my practice. Yeah, that's something. At least once a week, uh, maybe five minutes short video. That's so worth it when you really start mm -hmm. understanding that information. That's so worth it. Mm -hmm. I hope you stick to that practice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you see, you found a way to create something for yourself. You mm -hmm. created this routine. Okay, let me do yoga in English. Mm -hmm. And you know what it's giving you. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Thank you so much for coming. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. And I hope to see you grow and I hope to see you create fantastic things. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.